This was like the most highly anticipated and highly requested and highly demanded craft for Once Upon a Time, or prop, whatever you may call it, um, which was Pandora's box. So this box was very simple to do, and it was one of those things that I'm like, this is going to be really hard. How on earth am I going to do this without it looking like carp? And so when I ended up putting it together, I'm like actually pleasantly surprised. I'm like, damn, that looks nice. Right? Watch the tutorial and then let me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, please like it and subscribe so I can do more videos like this because I really do love doing it and the feedback is awesome and it, you know, your feedback makes me want to do more things. So for sure, definitely comment and request. I actually had someone request a bunch of stuff. Um, Kalinda Strayhorn. I was like, I was looking through, I read all the comments, I'm looking through the comments and I'm just like, holy smoke, she had requested like, 30 things that I'm like, wow, I didn't even think there was that many ones upon a time things to do. But now that I have this huge list of stuff, I can kind of pick through it and see what have I done, what do I want to do kind of thing from there. So thank you so much for your requests and your comments. Uh, it is much appreciated. And enjoy this video and we'll see you again soon. Bye. The most dreaded project for me, but the most fantastic project for me. This actually turned out so cool and it was one of those things I'm like, I don't want to do it. It's going to be so hard. But it actually wasn't. It was super easy. This is a box. And then I painted the box with black. Black um, acrylic paint. And then I dry brushed it with brown acrylic paint. And um, this is a Martha Stewart living paint. It is sold at any other Michaels or you can get it at Walmart, I believe. And this is also a top coat on top of the brown of a, it was like a metallic silver and a blue mixture together. And you're going to dry brush everywhere of that. Note, I did not do the inside. I just painted the inside because it was like this fluorescent yellow color. And I figured, what if you can see it? So um, you don't need to paint your inside if you don't want to. These strips are going to be the strips to go around the entire edge of the box. This paper I had at home, but I'm sure you could go to the craft store and try to find like a little bit of a rusty metallic kind of color paper that has like some brown and blues in it. Um, or you could use black if you really wanted to and paint it. But when you uh, glue these things on, you want to make sure that they're nice and flat because if they're not flat, they're going to look like carp. And when I say carp, I don't mean like carp like the fish. I mean carp like you know what I'm talking about. So take your time and push these edges down. Um, the width wise, I will put in the description box and the length wise is up to you because you're going to cut it anyway and that's just a waste of my time. So um, as you can see, just follow my handy dandy directions as I push down these edges and you will get it with no problem. These are squares that I cut from the original paper and you're going to fold it into four so it has creases on it. This is so it sits nice with the box and has a little bit of a bond. Then I cut a slit up one of the strips and then just fold it over. There you go, you got a half square. Woo! That's magic I'm telling ya. Anyway, it's a little bit tedious because you have to do five, or five of these, uh, eight of these to cover every single corner, but um, it's going to be totally worth it in the end because it's just that little bit of detail that makes it that much better. So take your time and really try to get these on properly and get the corners actually bent properly. I will put uh, links in the description as well. This once again was just the paper and I'm just following a direction, or not a direction, but a picture that I had seen on the Googles. I just looked up a picture and I was trying to follow it the best I could. It's really hard sometimes because I try to go off the ones that they actually have in the show, but I mean I did my best. This was just the same paper again and I had a little bit of a hard time deciding how I was going to do the top of the box. I wanted to use metal circles. I used to have metal circles, but of course me being a dum-dum, I threw them out because I'm like, what am I ever going to use these for? And then, lo and behold, I'm looking for them for like an hour, being like, where did I put those circles? But paper worked just as good, so I mean, I didn't have to buy anything extra for it, and it worked. And you're just gonna glue it on the top, and then I do apologize, there is some footage missing, but I'll explain it in the end, so stay tuned if you want to know how I did the full top. This here, I'm just dry brushing every single white edge of the paper, which took forever, but it was a must do because it kind of covered up the white paper so it didn't look like paper. Um, you don't want it to look bad, so take the time to do that. That right there was a grate that goes on the bottom, which again, I'll show you in the end from my missing footage. And then these are uh, gears that I found at Michael's. They have this really amazing line called like Lost Tre... Look at your paw! 
Anyway, they have this amazing line called like lost treasures or like hidden treasures or something and they have gears and keys and stuff. It turned out so cool because these things are so neat that they sell. I think they're seven bucks or something. There's the grate, as you can see, I just put that on the bottom, once again, just the paper, and then you have painting on the A and the upside down U thing, or whatever that thing's called, um, and dry brushing over a bit. So here's the part that I want to explain, I'm going to try to do it quickly. This is a lid that came, the little circle in the middle, it came on this container that the jewels came in. So I basically just popped the lid off and cut it down a little bit, and then put it on top to give it a bit of a lift. And then another piece of paper was on top of that, and then the jewel. Now the jewel was a dimensional, like a three dimensional jewel or whatever, you can see how it's pointy. So I did have to cut a hole in it and then put the jewel inside and glue it in. I mean, it was quite simple. It was a little bit hard to figure out, but it ended up looking really cool in the end. So I am super happy with it. I maybe might put another coat of paint on the bottom because once again, I got lazy and was like, eh, it's fine. But it's kind of like translucent. You can see the yellow. 